Welcome to Business Done Differently, where baseball team owner turned showman Jesse Cole speaks with successful entrepreneurs who stand out in business and in life by thinking differently and challenging the status quo. We believe whatever is normal, do the exact opposite, and that normal gets normal results. If you want to stand out and be different, this one's for you. Today's guest is Steve Weaver, the owner of Candle Lab with seven locations and 25 partner locations. Now, I recently met Steve at MMT, one of the best conferences in the world, and I was first literally blown away by him during the skeet shooting competition, which not only did he dominate, he won the competition, but Steve, I don't think he knew that, that I actually finished in dead last. I missed every single skeet that I was trying to shoot. So I was wondering, like, who is this guy? And later that day, I heard Steve on a panel about creating amazing customer experiences. And I was like, this guy gets it. The way he does mystery shoppers, films his employees, and has a certification program, I was hooked. Now, fast forward a couple weeks later, and I see him at his entire leadership team at the Customer Service Revolution. And they were all rocking their Candle Lab shirts as well. Steve isn't your typical candle maker, which I don't even know what that is. But he is doing something dramatically different with the experience at Candle Lab. And I am pumped to have you on the show today, Steve. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Don't beat yourself up about the shooting. We were just out there enjoying the scenery, and the shooting was secondary to the just the sunshine that day. So I was happy to be there with you. Yeah, it was a disaster for me. As a guy who actually played college baseball and tried to hit 90-mile-an-hour fastballs, I couldn't hit anything. It was disgusting. And then you just win it and hit every one. So I was immediately jealous. But... Steve, really enjoyed getting to know you a little bit. But, I mean, first off, we haven't even talked about this. Candles? I mean, who in their right mind says, let's start a candle shop? It has been a winding journey to get here, to be sure. It was not certainly not part of the plan. For as long as I can remember, I mean, from kindergarten on, I only wanted to go into politics. It's the only thing I ever remembered wanting to do growing up, and I really never wavered from it. I went to college for it in Washington, D.C., and then I worked the first 10 years of my professional life in every corner of the political world. And it just reached a point where... I was running out of people that I wanted to help get elected, and I was surrounded by some pretty shifty characters And when you're running in the political world. So I reached a point where I just closed down my political business, and I gave myself a couple months to be open to the world and just try to figure out what I was going to do next. Like I said, my whole life had been politics at that point, so I really had no frame of reference for what was coming next. And my girlfriend at the time just burned an unbelievable number of candles. Every time I would go to her apartment, she'd have at least two or three candles burning nonstop, and they never seemed to burn all the way down. They never seemed to smell true to scent or, or burn very clean. And so it just slowly dawned on me that as, if this is the typical candle buyer and this is the candles that they are buying, it feels to me like this is a market that is ripe for the disruption. If we could come in with a, a little better option and give people some control over the scents that surrounded them, that there might be a viable business here. So I convinced her while we were still dating before we got married to quit her job and start a candle store with me and it's grown from there. We got married three years later, and now it's been 11 years and just have never uh, found a time to jump off the candle train. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> I guess I'm intrigued on, on how you built this because obviously you have the big ones like Yankee Candle. and But how did you say, you know, we're going to disrupt this? Because again, disruption is my language. And what was your decision in, to start that? Absolutely. I'm fascinated by businesses and business owners who take what amounts to a commodity product or a very pedestrian experience and turn it into something truly unique. And so, I mean, you're certainly a perfect example of that. There is lots of people enjoy an afternoon at a baseball game, but you know, when you can turn it into something that is truly a remarkable experience, then you get just tremendous real estate in that person's brain in terms of coming back and bringing the family and bringing friends and talking about it and posting on social media. So that's always the kind of entrepreneurs and the kind of business opportunities that I get drawn to. So so candles are about as commodity a product as you can get. They're available everywhere and most people don't it's not a big decision point for them. It's something that they kind of grab on a whim or they might be brand loyal to a certain store they go to once in a while or they're a certain scent that they enjoy that they'll buy wherever they see it. But it's not something that really people build much of their discretionary budget around or and they certainly don't give it a lot of thought. So as I was watching my girlfriend's candles and how she kind of picked them and how it seemed to be a really important part of her for making her apartment into a home. It was the way in which she made that into, you know, the way in which she was nesting there and the way in which she was creating the spaces where she wanted to spend her time. We started to look at like, where are the places where the current candle companies are falling short? Where are the pain points in, in the selecting of the fragrances that surround people that we could fix? So one of them was 
just getting a natural, more clean and burning candle. There's a lot of impurities in most production candles. It puts a lot of black soot up in the air. And so can we get a candle that burns clean that you're happy to put in your house? It doesn't put black soot all over your walls and your lampshades and, and you know, get in your furnace filter. Then the second piece where we felt like there was room for differentiation is, is scent is such a personal thing. Everybody's nose is different. So it smells good to you. It's going to smell awful to somebody else. So if we gave people the chance to really customize their own fragrances, then they could get something that was truly unique. So it's an almost impossible mission to come up with a perfect apple pie candle because what you might love your apple pie with lots of caramel and vanilla and sweetness to it. And I might like a lot of nutmeg and cinnamon, a lot of spice to it. And neither one of us are wrong. It's just based on the apple pie we ate growing up and what our palate is now. And so instead of trying to come up with a perfect apple pie candle, I'd rather give our customers an apple and a cinnamon and a caramel, brown sugar, whipped cream, and, and let them mix it so that when they walk out the door and they put their nose in that candle and they get home, they say, this is exactly what apple pie is supposed to smell like. And then when people come over and say, oh, your place smells so good. Oh, it's the apple pie candle that I made at the candle lab. I created this using my own expertise. So it's just created a really unique experience and a really quality natural product it's given us a chance to take a chunk out of some of those big production candle companies. I love this, Steve, because it's like what I call is the mirror moment. You put yourself in your customer's shoes and you look in the mirror and say, all right, what's frustrating from the industry you're in? And I've shared here that I've always believed that to many, baseball was long, slow, and boring. We had to change that. So you looked at the candle industry, how it was, and said, all right, how do we not make it better, but how do we make it into actually an experience? Because when you buy candles, you kind of just glance over, as you meant, you grab a candle. So tell me about the Candle Lab experience, because I think this is fascinating. Yeah, so when you walk into our stores, we've got a wall of 108 different fragrances. So these are pre-made candles, but they're in single scents. If you're in a hurry or if there is a particular scent that you really love just by itself, you can certainly buy that ready to go off the shelf. But the real fun, the unique experience is we're going to give you a clipboard, and you're going to smell through those candles, and you're going to use them as a scent lab. You're going to use them to discover some new scents that maybe you've never smelled before, maybe some old ones that you haven't smelled in a while. You're going to make a list of your favorite scents on the clipboard. Then you head over to a, we have a rack of glassware and other containers. So you're going to pick a container that matches your style. This was another one of the pain points that, that we had identified in the beginning of maybe you might like the scent of a candle, or, but the color doesn't match the room you want to put it in, or the container is a little too country for your tastes. Come up with your list of favorite scents. Then you're going to go over and pick a container that you're going to be excited to put on your mantle or on your desk or, or on your table at home. And then you have a seat at the bar. And our scent stylists are going to take a look at that list, and they're going to talk you through your favorite scents, what goes together, what might not go together as well, what kind of mood are you trying to create, what room are you going to be burning this in, and we'll come up with a blend that is unique to your nose and will stop you from making a really horrible scent mistake that you'll regret. Then you're going to actually blend those oils a drop at a time. You're going to get, say we're doing your apple pie example again. If you get out apple and cinnamon and caramel, you're going to mix those three oils together in the ratio that you want. And then you stir it together in, in your candle, and the candle takes about an hour to set up. So once you make your candle, you can go grab dinner or drinks or do some other shopping. You can go get a pedicure, go see a baseball game. You can do whatever is around us. And then an hour later, your candle's set up to either come back and pick up or we leave and deliver it to you wherever you are. So it makes for a great night out. It's a fun date night. It's a fun girls' night out. We do kids' birthday parties, You know, so it's all ages. It's just a really fun experience, and it's a chance to really craft the sense that surrounds you. As the candles became more popular as part of that experience, people started asking, like, well, if I can make my own candle, why can't I also make my own soap or lotion? And so now we've expanded. There's about 26 products you can make in our store. So we're called the Candle Lab, but really we are a scent lab that will let you come up with the scents for all of the scented products in your home or for the gifts that you want to give. You can create a custom scent for somebody with, you know, with scents that remind you of them. So we get to see so many people with just unique stories and unique reasons that they're coming in. And these remarkable scent memories that they're trying to capture in these products. So it is just, nobody's ever in a bad mood mixing scents together. So we love it. I'm fascinated by this because it, it is actually an experience, it sounds like. So like a kid's birthday party, like what does that look like? Or do you serve drinks, like like a group come over and like make candles and have wine? Like what do these experiences look like? Some of our stores have liquor licenses where you can grab a cocktail or a glass of wine while you're making the candle. Most of them don't because really we put our stores in the middle of districts that have like business districts that have a lot of restaurants or wine bars or other retail options around there because we are fantastic at the scent part of the experience but you know we don't have kitchens to serve food and yeah. we offer limited drink menus but really we are going to put our store right in the middle of the best collection of restaurants in a city so 
you know, we've got stores in Columbus and Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. If you think of where the best restaurants are clustered in those cities, that's exactly where, you know, we've got stores right in the middle of all of those. And so you're going to pour your candle, then you're going to head out to dinner. You're going to have a fantastic meal. And just as your dinner is ending and the check is arriving, your candles are going to be delivered to your table. So we've decided that we could certainly have expanded and put liquor licenses in all the stores and added, you know, small plates of food. But we do our experience very well, and then we want to send you out and have other people do their experience really well. So when we're thinking about opening a new store in a new neighborhood, the first thing we do is we're having lunch and dinner in all the restaurants, usually multiple times, saying, can these places take care of our customers in the same way that we want to take care of our customers? And if so, then we'll go ahead and sign a lease and we'll drop a store right in there. If not, we can't sign a lease there because what you do in that hour while you're waiting for your candle to set up gets compressed in your mind with the candle making experience. So we've actually had to close a store before because we didn't do that kind of due diligence on the front end with the restaurants. And customers would have a great time in our store and they'd head out and have a horrible time at, at the restaurants around us. They'd come back. It didn't matter how good that candle was. They were never coming back. So now we are extra careful about scouting out a neighborhood and saying, are we comfortable trapping somebody here for an hour? And are there people here who will really take care, who will create the same kind of experience in their restaurant or wine bar that we'll create in our stores? Mm. It's really interesting to me because everything's about speed, but you're really building the experience because an hour is not, I mean, that's some time. It sounds like a process, but people are, it sounds like they're lining up for it. I mean, how are you noticing how these people are able to handle the wait time for this? Like, what are you doing? I mean, you're telling them to go out the doors and go to restaurants. I'm just fascinated by this because everyone is in the speed business now, but you're like, no, this is an experience. It's going to take time, but it's going to be worth it. Yeah, there's certainly a good bit of customer education on the front end. Well, we think of our staff almost like a hotel concierge. So if you wanted to come in either for a date night or you wanted to bring in a group, you know, we avoided all of the kind of the technology pieces of like online booking, you know, that works very well for a lot of other businesses. But for us, we want you to call and say, hey, I'm coming in this Friday night. I mean, you know, it's going to be a date night. My wife and I, this is what we're thinking. I was going to grab some dinner and then we're going to maybe pour a candle and then kind of explore if that. We're like, oh, well, listen, if you come first here. We're going to get your candle poured first so that then when you're done with dinner, your candle's waiting for you and you don't have to wait around any longer. Also, can I help you make any restaurant decisions? I can help make some good recommendations. So we make sure our staff has eaten at all the restaurants that surround their stores so that they can speak intelligently because our ability to help you pick the best restaurant for you and your wife is, again, directly linked to your happiness for the whole night out as part of our brand experience. So we really have to get knowledgeable and, and sometimes we'll have to say like, hey, I'm not sure that restaurant's going to give you the kind of experience you want. Can I give you some other suggestions that you might have an even better experience? So we're actively choreographing your evening to make sure that from where you're going to park to how when you're going to get to our store to how much time it takes and where you're going to go next and how the rest of that evening comes together. We take full responsibility for that whole evening because that's how we're going to ensure you're going to have a great time. Mm. That's brilliant, Steve. I think if every business not only just yours should look at their staff as being concierge to answer questions, to help with everything. And even if it isn't, like you said, you're sending them out the door. They're so knowledgeable and helping them. And again, it's not necessarily about them driving revenue in you. It's them having an amazing night. And what if every business thought of, hey, it's, we're just a small stop in your night. How can we make your experience amazing? And I want to get into how you train the staff because you know that's some of the things I was blown away by. But you also mentioned this message you kind of go by. And it was an ice cream shop, I think you mentioned. It was like, does this place look like a place that serves the best ice cream in the world? And that's kind of the mentality you take on how your the Candle Lab is presented. Is that correct? Jenny's Ice Cream is probably our biggest, most successful Columbus company that Jenny started here, or the single stand in kind of our food market. And now she's got ice cream shops all over the country. And she is constantly mystery shopping her stores. And the mystery shopping form only has one question on it. It says, did this seem like the kind of store that was serving the best ice cream in the world? And what it does is it gives whoever is doing that mystery shopping for them, and they've got a range of people that will do this, it gives them room to answer whatever it is that they are bringing to that experience. So one person might say like, well, no, you know, the trash cans were kind of overflowing. So if this was the best ice cream in the world, you guys would be more on top of your trash cans or maybe not because I didn't get a friendly greeting. Instead of that kind of mystery shopping forms are just a 50 point checklist. Like, was this thing clean? And was there enough of this thing on the shelf? Which is fine. But like, I always want to leave it open. I think they were very smart to leave it open for a customer to bring their particular view of the world in and say, actually, yes, this like this was perfect. Or nope, here's the thing that I was missing. And so now they get to see it through every fresh set of eyes. 
So we've really adopted that same approach and we give both our customers and our employees just a, we're constantly auditing each step of that process to say if we're talk if we say that these are the most natural gourmet fantastic candles that you can buy and that once you custom mix this you're never going to go back to candles off the shelf then we just have to make sure that every part of the experience all the little details are helping with that story and that there's nothing that's undermining that story. So we've done all kinds of things over the years to audit each step. Like we've upgraded the pens that the customers will use to decorate their labels because if our candles are premium candles, then we can't be giving them cheap markers to be coloring the labels with. We've upgraded the tissue that we wrap the candles in because if we're going to sell somebody a $21 candle, we can't wrap it in the cheapest tissue we can find. It's the aprons that our employees wear. It's the way in which we do our greeting. It's the skill to which we can make those restaurant recommendations. Every one of those things reflects on the overall brand and the product quality. And so finding ways to continuously and relentlessly audit that experience has been just incredibly valuable for us to get where we are today. I took that home with us because I started thinking, our ballpark's 1926. And I'm like, does this look like a place that has the best sports and entertainment or puts on the best show in the world? And it's a challenge with a 1926 ballpark. But I think you mentioned the attention to detail. And it's something that we looked at. The first year, we were shipping merchandise all over the world, and it was going in a regular package. So we ended up buying yellow custom packages, getting a stamp that said Delivered Fresh with a Bananas logo on it. And then we package it with yellow tissue paper, a letter from our director of merchandise, and decals and magnets, and try to package it. And that costs, yeah, 2 3 $4 more. And we didn't increase our prices, but we said, does this look like merchandise that we'd be proud of? And it has paid off. I mean, it's one of those things we have people take pictures of their opening their box, kind of like Apple. And it's part of that experience. And it looks like you now look at that with every single detail in your store. The other thing that does, it sets the expectation for what the experience is going to be when they finally get to the ballpark. So just this past week, I bought some Savannah banana tickets for a friend. And they're now going to receive the same package that you're talking about. And and I want them to know that, that I didn't just buy them some baseball tickets out of the blue. I bought them what I what's going to be an incredibly unique experience for them to take their family. And they're going to know right from the first time that box opens that, wow, this is a little different thing. This is something where we're in for a completely different experience. It just sets the expectation and says, if these people care this much about the banana stickers in here and and the yellow packaging, when we get to the ballpark, we can expect the same kind of level of care for the day. And it puts them on a whole nother level. It's essentially a relationship. You are dating your customers, whether you like it or not. And so the effort that you put into that relationship is what's going to be, it's either going to be a long-term relationship or it's going to be a one-night stand. So we talk about that all the time. Oh, I love it. I love it. I want to get into some stories and some experiences. Uh, the mystery shoppers you mentioned, what have you, what have you seen or learned from that or any things that have really stood out? Like, I think as an owner, one of the best feelings you can have is pride in your people, you know, the experiences that they're providing. Have there been some things that really stood out that you've noticed or heard from on this mystery shopper program? You're absolutely right. There is nothing more gratifying than somebody stopping you on the street. They see the logo on your shirt or they say, I've got this candle van that we drive around. And so people will stop me all the time and tell me stories of coming into the store and how our staff took care of them. And that is such a validation, not just in the brand they're creating, but in the people that we're curating and the the way we um, have attracted those people to come and work here. And the fact that they're excited every day to deliver that piece of it. So The stories bubble up kind of organically. Some of it are posted on social media, but I, you know, I really appreciate the people grabbing me on the street one on one and and sharing a story. My daughter's in second grade and she had a new student who moved into the school district this year. And so Reagan, my daughter is very conscientious. She's like, Hey, Hallie's new to school this year. And I thought maybe it would be nice to have her over for a play date. Just let her know that like this is a great community that she's moved into and she's got good friends here. So she came over right when school started and. They had a great time playing. And then when the mother came to pick her up, she shared that one of the first things that they did when they arrived here in town was visit one of our stores. A neighbor had mentioned it to them as a great place to go. And and she wanted to give something fun for her kids since they're in a new city. And so she came in and they got a couple candles. And and then when they came back to pick up the candles they had made, the employees were working and said, like, hey, I stuck an extra couple candles in the bag to make sure that your house feels like a home. We're so excited to have you here in this community, and thank you for coming in and making us a part of your time here in in Worthington. So our employees know that they are empowered any time to give discounts, give free candles, give special touches, because that moment right there, when that happened, Kristen, our employee who did that that experience, had no idea that that woman's daughter would end up being in my daughter's class or that they would end up going on to be friends. 
She just saw an opportunity to welcome somebody new to town and say, if you're a part of this Worthington community, you're going to be a part of our family here at the Candle Lab because this is where we've had a store for many years. And we're so excited to have you here and have you experiencing our products and coming into our store and bringing your children in with you that we really hope you come back and we really hope your home feels like a place where you and your kids are excited to settle here. So those little moments, none of them are earth shattering by themselves, but it's the sum total of all of those little interactions that add up to the word of mouth that powers small businesses. It is social media dimensions are great and certainly advertising is effective if done correctly, but one person turning to another person and say, welcome to town. You got to make sure you go check out the candle lab. One of the first things you do here that is gold, and it's all of our success so far. I attribute to the incredible staff we have delivering those kind of experiences each day. It's so powerful, and I could tell from the first time I met your leadership team, I came over and immediately all stepped up out of their chairs, came over, introduced themselves, all smiling. And you mentioned empowering them. It was so obvious that they felt purpose in what they're doing. And it's kind of crazy to think like you're selling candles, but obviously you and your wife, you don't talk about that. It's bigger than that. It's a purpose. And you mentioned coming home. You're trying to provide something to help them feel like home. How do you share that purpose that it's a little bigger than just selling candles? Your focus on stories here is, is spot on because this is basically the, where the training comes from with our staff is that scent has such a powerful effect on mood and memory. It's such a great way of telling those stories. And so if we keep emphasizing to our staff the core of what we're doing. We're not trying to make money by selling candles. We're trying to create the sense that people are going to surround themselves with. They're going to scent the spaces where they spend their time and help them create the kind of mood and effect that they want in these spaces. So we have couples that will come in that are in a long distance relationship. And so they're in different cities and they'll make a candle together. They'll each make a candle with the same scent so that when they get on Skype or FaceTime in the evening and they're having their conversation, you know, many miles apart, they're not only seeing one another through the screen, which is tremendous technology that has made that experience better, but now they're smelling the same scent, the scent that they created together. And while that seems like a little thing, it really does take on a lot of meaning you know, to these couples. Or somebody comes back from vacation and they had such a fantastic vacation that they come straight into the candle lab and they are trying to capture the scent of that vacation in a jar before it goes away. So they just got back from Hawaii or they just got back from the Pacific Northwest. And so the couple that just came from the Pacific Northwest, they're blending salty sea air with the pine trees scent. And so those two things together is going to capture this getaway vacation they had that was romantic and relaxing. And now whenever they light that candle, it's going to take them right back to this really special week. We're not selling candles. We're selling the ability to come in and consciously capture a scent that's going to create a very specific reaction in you or the people you care about. And as long as we keep focusing on those stories, and it's easy to remember, this is more than just a candle store. This is a scent bar that is going to teach people how to use scent as an interior design element. If I'm coming over to your house to watch a football game here in your in your new man cave, and you've just, you just put a big screen TV on the wall, and you've got this big leather furniture and all these bookcases, it can't smell like Summer Meadow Glade plug-in, right? You can't just like throw something in there and, and try to kill off the scent in there. That room has a scent that you're, if you saw a picture of it, you're expecting when you come over, it should smell like Ron Burgundy, right? Which would be scotch and old books here. <laughs> and so if we can teach you that there's a scent to this design and there's a mood you're trying to create and we can work with you to figure out what that is, then when your friends come over, you're like, oh man, this room is awesome. You're like, oh, plus it smells so good in here. It smells like a bourbon distillery in here. That's going to tie that room together in a way that just a paint color or some sports memorabilia on the wall won't do by themselves. So it really is educating customers and helping them capture the moods and the stories they want to create. And that is, so we keep finding those stories and we keep highlighting them up to the staff to remind them, this is what we're doing every day and not just the collecting of money for candles. Mm. A few powerful things there. I mean, the sharing over and over again, the stories and what it means, but I immediately started going back to trips to Disney World. You know, when I was a kid, I'm big into craft beer and breweries and I can picture the smell and, and as I go in there and the way it makes you feel. And I think the big thing, Steve, is it's how it makes you feel. It actually goes back. Those scents have such a powerful thing. And I know we're going on a tangent now, but does every business have a way to describe how your product makes people feel? And I think that's what's so easy to share with your group because everyone has favorite smells that they can think about. And you're providing that, which is providing something much deeper than just the smell itself. It's one of the basic tenets of marketing, but it's one that not a lot of small businesses have thought all the way through. And that is, what is the before and after 
the customer's life and experience before they discover your business and afterward. If you have a transition, if you have something that you can offer to them of value, then that is the story you need to be telling them. So before people find the candle lab, they are maybe buying a blueberry cobbler candle off the shelf at Target on clearance because that's better than whatever their place smells like now and they need to drown out the smell of dirty laundry and takeout food. And after they find us, each room has a custom fragrance that is crafted by them to match their style and the mood they're trying to create there. When their friends come over, they're like, man, their place smells so great. And they've got a pride of ownership and they've consciously thought through the scents that surround them in the same way that they thought about the paint color or the art on the wall. We're always talking about the before and after, like what can we offer to people? What is their life going to look like after we've taught them about the power of custom fragrance? If you can focus in on that, because most small businesses want to tell you what they do or what services they provide. And while that's nominally useful for letting your customers know who you are, it's, you know, in your case, there's a family outing of whatever you're going to do, or you can come to a Savannah Bananas baseball game and have a truly remarkable, truly memorable family experience that like is going to be the talk of the dinner table for weeks to come. And it's going to be something that when friends come into town, you're like, oh, we can't wait to take you here. This is something that we have that you don't have that we're going to share with you. This is how our family has fun. That before and after and that value proposition is it should be top of mind for every employee because it reminds them of what it is that they're delivering each customer experience. Yeah, I love it. You know, I don't know if you knew this, but actually last year, Steve, we had scratch and sniff banana tickets. So that was shaped like bananas. So when you scratch them, it actually smelled like bananas. And, you know, I was thinking this, I was like, we have old bathrooms. What would it take to have the best smelling bathrooms in the world? How could people actually say, you know what? I want to go in the bathroom. No, no, no. I don't need to go to the bathroom. I just want to go in there because of the smell. I may be seeking you out for uh, guidance there. But again, you think about that. Why does Disney, one of the reasons, they pay attention to all your senses, the lighting, the smells, the sounds. I mean, it's unbelievable. And you have a feeling because of that. And I think every business should be seeking you out or other people to start paying more attention to the scents that are provided, not just what you can see in front of you. Absolutely. It's true for individuals in your homes. Your home and your car and your office has a scent. Now, the only question is whether or not you're consciously choosing that or whether it is just being chosen for you based on whatever is sitting on the floor of your car or how long it's been since you've done the laundry the last time at home. It's true for businesses. Every business has a scent. If you have a business where you're seeing customers in person, whether that be a doctor's dentist office or a retail store, a salon, spa, yoga studio, every one of these places has a scent. And if you aren't consciously cultivating that, you're leaving a, a major tool on the table in terms of telling your story. Think about all the yoga studios in a given city. And there's one might be really relaxing, kind of Zen yoga, and another one's really hot, aggressive yoga. Those places should have different scents. There should be a signature scent that you know going into it, that it's something you're going to experience when you go there. It's They should have it in candle form to be able to take home. So when you're doing your yoga practice at home, it's a way of extending the practice that you have, get, you get at your studio. Because there's another way of reminding customers about your brand when you're at home. We do a lot of scents for breweries and distilleries and bakeries. There's a very famous bakery here that has an apple pie that was featured in Food and Wine magazine. And so people were making a pilgrimage to this bakery in order to get pick up these apple pies. Well, we made a line of apple pie candles that had her picture holding an apple pie on the side of it. And, and so now they're leaving with both an apple pie and then a candle that's going to last 80 hours. And so long after that pie is gone... They're still enjoying that, and it's reminding them, ah, oh, it's about time for me to order another one of AJ's pies. So that storytelling through brand and through scent, that creating of the customer experience through scent, is just another one of those details that a lot of businesses don't always focus on, but it's a chance to get such a home run with very minimal effort. Mm. I think you have a book, Steve, You know, it's called Make Sense, Grow Your Business with the Power of Sense and Storytelling. Yes. The name has gone through several iterations. It is Grab Customers by the Nose. So it's, oh, it's, You actually yeah. are writing a book. This is great. This yes. Is great. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah. The book is coming out very early in 2019. The book will be out. And it is written specifically for business owners that have physical brick and mortar businesses. And it's called Grab Customers by the Nose. And it's going to be how to use scent as a marketing and branding tool to grow your business. Love it. One thing I want to jump on employees with a few quick finishes here. You talk about employee certified. You actually have your employees certified and go through a system. Could you explain that briefly? Because I think that's fascinating as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a training passport that we use where when, so when somebody gets hired, everybody gets hired at the same initial dollar per hour based on their position. And then the passport is very clearly laid out as they assemble the skills and certifications that they need, their pay will go up 
because they get these stamps in their passport. And so it creates a very clear way forward. We never have to have conversations with employees of like, hey, I think I'm due for a raise. I'm doing a really good job. For us, the utility of those employees is their ability to offer all of these great experiences that we can. So the sooner they can get to be able to offering all these things, the more valuable they are to us. And as a result, the more they're going to get paid. It lets kind of each employee decide how fast or slow do I want to move through this certification process in order to not just increase the amount of money I'm making, but increase the number of things that I can do. So that if, if somebody comes in and they want to scent their wedding and they want to do some custom scented wedding favors, is this employee qualified to sit down one-on-one with that customer, create a custom scent for their wedding that either captures their wedding cake or the scent of the flowers and the bride's bouquet, get that special order placed, take payment, get that order in process, or is that something they haven't quite learned yet? And so as they assemble these individual skills, they become more useful to us, they make more money, and they're making progress towards finishing off their entire passport. So it gives a pretty clear direction forward, and it also gives us some pretty concrete things to test on. So what you had mentioned earlier, our mystery shopping program, we do a lot of video mystery shopping. This is where we send somebody in, usually a customer, with some kind of video recording device, and they're going to record the entire interaction from the time they get out of their car, walking up to the front door, all the way through their done pouring their candle or whatever other product they're making, and heading back out to their car. And these videos have been invaluable in us doing that auditing experience, because sometimes we think we've got it squared away, but then when we see it through a customer's eyes, or when we show it to our employees, it's a completely different thing, because now they say like, oh gosh, I thought I was doing this, or I thought... I was being really attentive, but this is what it looks like from their perspective. So, you know, if you want to do this, it's very easy. There are professional companies you can pay to do this that are pretty pricey, but Amazon has a tremendous selection of these spy gadgets that are like, you can put a spy camera in a water bottle or in a set of glasses or in a pen that you put in your pocket on a key fob. So range of these things, so the employees don't catch on. And so they go in, they record the whole interaction, and then we can chop it up afterwards and we can share it with the staff and say, here's what a really enthusiastic reading looks like when done well. Greet them within a few steps of getting in here. We, we seem excited that they're here. We share with them the key points we want to get out in that greeting. And then here's what it looks like when we're too busy to really deliver that fantastic greeting. And that employee may have felt like they had kind of paused what they were doing and kind of, kind of thrown a greeting their way. But when you see it from that customer perspective, you say, boy, that just does not feel like them walking in the door was the most important part of my day. And so then it gives us a chance to get better at that. So the combination of the passport where we've documented the things that are necessary for them to to move up in terms of responsibility and earning potential, coupled with the video of them actually implementing those things, is really gives them a picture of what we expect of them and what it takes to succeed. And the people who we want to hire, who we want to keep around, are love the fact that they've got a path forward to earning more money, and they also love that they get the feedback of, this is when I did it well and when I fell short, and I can learn from it, I can keep moving forward. So. Mm-hmm. It's been fantastic. It's brilliant. You know, if you're not using film in your business, you're behind the times now. And because I think about when I play baseball, we filmed every bullpen. We filmed every game. We'd break down our pitching. We'd break down our hitting. Yet in business, oh, we don't use film anymore. And so we started filming our show. We film our on-field host. We film the promotions and we watch it. How was your tone? How was your voice? Where were you positioned? But we've never filmed the game day staff. And we have 150 here. And I think that's brilliant because hopefully people understand that you're not only trying to help them grow with the business, but help them grow as people as well. Oh, yeah. If you kind of cut that together, you send somebody in and they, you know, they're going to visit the ticket taker. Then they're going to go and hit the refreshment stand. Then they're going to go hit the information stand and the gift shop. They hit all those places and you kind of splice that together into video of like, this is the day in the life of one of our customers. Do we think this set of interactions made them more or less likely to recommend us, more or less likely to come back and bring friends or become a season ticket holder? It's pretty clear right from the beginning where we are winning and where we're falling short. I think some business owners are worried that it's it's like putting their staff on the spot or it's spying on them or they don't trust their staff if they use video. But I, like you said, it, it's such a valuable tool in sports. It's been invaluable to bring that over to the small business world. And we watch tape afterwards, just like you watch tape after a game. You're going to see some things you did well that we need to celebrate. We're going to see some things that we fell short on that we're going to figure out how we can do that consistently well each time. And as long as it's a good mix of good and bad, then people know it comes from a place of just wanting to get better and not like, hey, I'm just videotaping to try to catch you doing things wrong and then I'm going to take the piss out of you in front of the whole staff. <laughs> they know right away whether where the intentions come from. So use it to celebrate the wins. There, there's days where we do video recordings and there's not a, we didn't miss a single beat. And boy, you know, that's a day to celebrate when you didn't know you were being filmed. You didn't have any idea this wasn't just a normal customer. And we still knocked it out of the park. 
Great that's job. Awesome. That's fantastic. That's awesome. You know, I didn't know you had the book come out. I'm very excited. So before we go to the ninth inning, is there any story or big lesson you'd share that you've put together in the book so far? Oh, boy. So each, it's, I'm trying to make it a really practical guide. There's a lot of theoretical business books out there. I'm trying not to add to the stack here. I want to make this a something that you'd gift to every person you know who owns business. I would just say, even before the book comes out, your place smells like something. Your store smells like something. Your house smells like something. And so always my first advice is just think a little bit more critically about the senses around you. You spend lots of time thinking about the music that you play in your earbuds while you walk around. You think a lot about the food that you eat and you know, they think about touch, wearing comfortable clothes and thread count on sheets. And obviously, like the way your place looks, you spend a lot of time buying art and, and throw pillows and lamps to tie all that together. Your four senses get a lot of attention, but your sense of smell is really kind of the, the disregarded scent for a lot of people. You have a chance to really plug into that part of your brain that processes mood and memory. If you just think a little bit more about the senses around you, spend some time thinking about that. And if it's a business, your customers are going to thank you for it as well. I love it. You got me thinking about it already. Like, can I get this whole ballpark smelling like bananas? The only thing is like, not everyone loves bananas. However, it isn't really on point, but you really got me right. thinking, Steve, about that. I love it. In the ninth inning, I want to go quickly, a marketing minute. All right. If you were to say what's the, one of the best things you've done to grow your brand, what would it be? From a marketing standpoint, it's empower our customers to tell our story. So one thing to toot your own horn and to run social media ads and to send email newsletters, but all of our best work has come whenever we give the story to our customers to tell to their friends, whether that being bring in a friend or bring in your mom on Mother's Day or a chance to round up a group and your candles are free if you bring us the group. Every time we give our best customers the chance to tell our story for us, we get the best results. That's always better than whatever advertising money you're putting into now. I, I love it. How do you do that? I agree. If you have 100 people that love you, it's better than a million people that like you. Love goes so far. So how do you get your best customers to share your story? But there's a couple things we do. First is our email list is segmented out into our true raving fans and then the people who visit us a couple times a year and then the people who have come in once or twice but haven't come back. And so we don't try to build a giant email list and ping them all the same. We try to segment them out so the people who really love what we are doing we're giving them the most love back and the most chance to turn around. We'll give them promotions and live events that other people won't get. They'll know that they're celebrated, and then they know that they are empowered to come and to help us spread the word, and they're going to get perks as a result of that. The second thing we do is we educate our staff on the kind of stories that we want our customers to be telling. So this is a, a longer piece, but the short version is our customers were posting some pictures of checking it when they checked in our business that was not – we didn't feel like it was the best version of our story we had to tell. It was just the easiest picture for the customer to take, given the way our process was set up. And so we've gone through a lot of training to say, what pictures do we want our customers to be posting on their social media to talk about us? And then how can we help them get those shots? So our staff is trained to say, like, hey, you know, while you're making your candle, can I take a picture of you guys making your candles together? And now we'll craft that photo for them on their phone to give them something to post rather than leaving up to chance whatever picture they're going to take when they do it. So when you know what story you want to be told, you can find ways to help make that easier for your customers to do it. Mm, absolutely love it. All right, before we get final here, I'll let you be the host of Business Done Differently. I've been grilling you with questions, Steve. You can grill me with one, any question you want. I am just absolutely fascinated by, like I said earlier, you have taken what amounts to a really commodity product, an afternoon in a ballpark, and, and transformed it over. I'm wondering how with all of the possible crazy ideas that you and your team can come up with, how that giant board of ideas gets sorted into these are the couple things we're going to actually put and implement, and these are the things that are we're going to get to down the road or that maybe are just a step too crazy for even us. It's a great question. We just finished this past week. We have an idea palooza every month or every two months, and we go over which areas that we are going to discuss and about which ones are going to be implemented. So we have a fans first director. You met Marie. She implements a lot of our fan experience stuff. We have our on-field host, our director of fun, you know, make sure some of the crazy on-field promotions happen. So what we do is we designate into what needs to be implemented and what is a crazy idea. But that has been a challenge. As you know, as an owner, we have hundreds of ideas, but we can't do it all. You need the people to put it out. So we make sure in our idea palooza, we assign who does it, who's in charge of that and who can own it. And uh, we make sure it happened. you got to have those people that are the implementers. They're as valuable as the idea makers. So fortunately, we've developed a great group who implements it. But the crazy ideas, I mean, Steve, I do 10 ideas every single day, and most of them are absolutely ridiculous. But when I start having the list that I think uh, these ones have to happen, I will usually assign them and get them to take ownership. 
That's a tough that's, question. It's a challenge for you as well, I'm guessing. Exactly. That's most entrepreneurs I know that's their special skill is generating 10 unworkable ideas a day. And then trying to <laughs> out which one your staff is willing to take on. And that's always my top question is how do you take that brain of yours and turn it into the remarkable experiences uh, you've got? Think what goes in our core beliefs too, the sheer values that we have, you know, one of our big things is whatever's normal, do the exact opposite and be different. So we make sure are the things we're doing, are they the same as everyone else? Are they normal? And are we tackling something that people are going to talk about? I think the big theme that you've mentioned here is stories. It's stories, 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 stories. So we talk, hey, will this create a story? We're okay to fail with something if it creates a story. Like, That's right. like world's largest ticket, salute to underwear night, flatulence fun night, you name it. They all created stories that as much as they failed, they've carried on with the story. So I think exactly. that's an interesting point. All right, file two here. You know, what's one thing, Steve, you've done to stand out in business and in life? So I would say we've led with our, led with our employees, led with our staff. A lot of businesses put their customers first, and we, all of the success we've had at this point, it comes from our remarkable team. Every free minute I have, instead of, creating a new line of business or trying to dream up the next big idea, we're trying to figure out how do we take the staff that we have now and make sure that they never want to leave us and make sure that they show up each day empowered to be able to do remarkable things for our customers. So that's been the focus right from day one. And that is any success I've had personally comes from our staff and the care we've taken in curating that group and empowering them and then rewarding them when they do the fantastic things they do every day. And finally, Steve, how do you want to be remembered? I mean, I've got two little girls at home right now that they're a full, each a full-time job all on their own. And so, you know, I spend every day thinking about my legacy as a husband and as a father and as a business owner. And mostly I spend my time thinking about how those three legacies are intertwined. I don't think of them as separate pieces. If I could be remembered for any one thing, it's that I took all of those various responsibilities and I wove them together into into one kind of seamless experience where everybody that I came in contact with knew that I cared about them and about our community and about the values that we talk about each day. And then that I found a way to, to live those each day. So that's always top of mind for me. I love it. It's so interesting when I ask that question, because you get a wide range of answers, but you know, I really believe be remembered for who you are and not necessarily what you accomplished. And you talked about building those legacies into the type of person you are, which is awesome. And it's obvious why your business has been so successful, why you're doing things differently. And I am pumped to read this book coming out, Steve. I'll tell you, I'm also pumped to try to get our ballpark to smell like bananas. So I'm going to talk to you about that as well. How can people find out more, connect with you, see what you're doing with the Candle Lab? Uh, that sounds great. My wheels are already turning about your banana scent. <laughs> now, can people, how can people learn more about you? So thecandlelab.com is our website and at the Candle Lab on every social media platform. That's always the, the way to interact with the brand. I am available. At, I'm Stephen O. Weaver on pretty much every social media outlet, and I'm Steve, S-T-E-V-E, at thecandlelab.com. I will take any and all questions, comments, inquiries. I love to hear from people, so hit me up and let me know what I can do for you, and I'll help you pick your favorite scent. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate you, my man. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Business Done Differently with Jesse Cole, the Yellow Tux Guy. If you love the show, let Jesse know by leaving a review on iTunes or sending him an email at jesse at findyouryellowtux.com. For more information on the guest and topics of this episode, visit findyouryellowtux.com. Until next time, stop standing still, start standing out. <laughs>